What's going on guys? Got a brand new movie review for you guys today and that is for Mandy. It stars Nicolas Cage and this film takes place in 1983 where Red, played by Nicolas Cage, is a lumberjack who lives in a secluded cabin in the woods and his artistic girlfriend Mandy spends her days reading fantasy paperbacks but then one day she catches the eye of a crazy cult leader who conjures up a group of motorcycle riding demons to kidnap her. Yes, this is all in this film. Red, armed with a chainsaw and other weapons, stops at nothing to get her back leaving a bloody brutal pile of bodies in his wake. Let me just say first off can we get more films with Nicolas Cage this unchained and this unhinged wielding a chainsaw and different sorts of weapons like this awesome brutal legends types of acts to kill some cult leaders and demons come on now this film is effing wild it's one of the most crazy films I've seen all year long and it's one of my favorites of the year too all of that goes to the directing and the writing in this this film is superb from top to notch from the directing and the writing standpoint the way that the director gets the performances out of these main actors how great everyone is they're bringing their a level to each and every scene like I said this film is very different even though it does have that simplistic kind of revenge tale that you do here within there it's different it's unique and it's dynamic it's not just because yeah, you have a crazy cult leader. No, it's not just because there's demons riding motorcycles. It's different in the way that it's shot and that the story is told. I've never seen anything by this director before, and I'm looking forward to whatever the guy does next, especially after this movie. This movie takes a lot of risk, and now this is an art house. This is an indie film, so if you're not into these types of films, this film ain't for you. And this film is not for everyone. It's a very hard film to recommend in that standpoint, but I do think a lot of people should give this film a shot because it is on VOD, but if it is in a theater near you, go and see it because it needs to be seen on the big screen. The vivid like portrait cinematography in here where it does feel like every scene in here is painted by a real life painter. The little cool nods in here that go to that homage 1980s grindhouse feel, even though it's not an homage, it feels like it's its own thing. All the care and love that went into this movie and really, this film is different. It's the easiest way to explain it. Now, I'd heard a lot of buzz coming out of Sundance earlier this year. It has a high rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but I never really heard any tiny aspects of this movie. Now, I'm giving you all the gist of what I knew about going into this movie because I, this film is not needed to be spoiled. This film is unique. And again, it's hard to recommend it, but it's a film that I want people to try and watch because it's so different. The, one of the big reasons that I think it's different is that the director makes a very brave choice in how he tells the story. Now, this movie is two hours and one minute exactly. And really, the runtime goes up to that two hours and one minute. The credits are not that long. When the film starts, everything I read in that synopsis really doesn't happen to probably 45 minutes in. First 45 minutes really feels like a prologue to the whole story. As you are watching this, it feels like someone who's reading a book or a painter is painting a story for you to kind of guess on what's going on. But you get to know these characters. You get to care about this relationship in a sense where you're as emotional as Nicolas Cage is in this situation. You get to know the cult leader. You get to know the different dynamics between the characters. And that's what makes this film not just your paint by the numbers revenge tale with dynamic and different demon scenes, but very much giving you an altercation to a different light. Something as I was watching the film, I did not really like the first half. I was very kind of bored. I was kind of zoning in and out. But at the same time, I was interested in what's going on. I was just wondering, okay, where's all this Nicolas Cage madness? Trust me, that's the thing that this film does so well is that it builds and builds and builds in the second you get to that, which is pretty much the whole back half of the film is that Nicolas Cage madness that you want. That's when the film starts. Again, is very unique, and I love that about this movie. Once you get to that Nicolas Cage madness, that unhinged, unchained Nicolas Cage, one, he gives the best performance he's given in a film since Kick-Ass, but two, he goes into such different lights, emotional, unhinged, unchained madness is what Nicolas Cage is. And again, yes, we make him as a meme now, but this guy was nominated for an Oscar. This is seriously one of the best actors that was working in Hollywood, and I, for me, this means he's back. Gives one of the best performances of this year. The way that he brings brings this character to life. This character of Red is so dynamic. You just believe everything that's going on on the screen. As wacky and wild as it can get, like I said, he's taking on demons. He's taking on cult leaders. He has a chainsaw. He has this cool brutal legends axe that he gets to slice people in half with. Awesome. It, it really is awesome. This film not really having any cons. It's one of the most unique art style 
dynamic indie films that I've ever watched. If you've ever seen a film by Nicholas Weinreffern who's directed, say, Drive or Neon Demon, you're kind of into those films, but you want something that goes even more absurd, that's what Mandy is. It not just contains one of the best performances of the year, but it, it also has a first power to the film that builds up and seems a little bit too long at first, but damn, the payoff is so worth it. It builds the relationship up so good between these two, and it got me emotional. It's effing wild. It's different. Like I said, this film is like you're watching a painter paint a vivid, effed up art house comic book, but man, this film won me over in every type of light. The score is superb. The cinematography is amazing and super different and just vivid and portrait-like. It's one of the best films of this year. Again, I loved Mandy. I hope you guys give it a shot. It's on VOD. It's going into theaters. Check it out. Do not miss Mandy out. So with all that said, I'm going to give Mandy an A-. Absolutely love this film, and it sucks that this film is going to go so under the radar. So guys, make sure to share this review. Let's get it out there to go see Mandy. Tell me, guys, have you guys seen this film, though? Comment down below and tell me what your guys' thoughts are on it. Of course, guys, if you guys are new here, hit up Sandwich on Films also down below, because right down there you guys can get into advanced movie screens, and also check out some movie news and even some movie reviews. But of course, guys, until next time, stay classy. We'll